Well, good evening. I hope that you've had a great day today. I hope that you've been encouraged and uplifted today. Uh, this evening, I want us to focus our attention on Psalm 63. Now, Psalm 63 is a Psalm of David, and, and it's a Psalm that helps us see his heart and his desire for God. Now, before we get to Psalm 63, uh, I want you to think back on all of the things in your life that you thought, you know, if I could just have that, the things that you've longed for. Maybe as a child, you thought, you know, if I could just have that new bike, or if I could just have that new game, that would really make me happy. And maybe on into our teenage years and, and even growing up into young adulthood and adulthood, we, we find things that really pique our attention, our, uh, our interest, and we think to ourselves, you know, if I could just have that, and we long for those things. It's interesting to me that Many people would, would come up with a number of things that they have longed for in their life, myself included. But the reality is when you think about what God is doing through his word and how he is drawing people to himself and, and really calling attention to who he is as he interacts with uh, his uh, people, it, we, we begin to see the reality that longing after God is something that God greatly desires from his people. Psalm 63 is one of those passages that we read about where we see the heart of this individual, and it's David as he is writing and pouring his heart out to God, but he, he's not uh, in, at this point in turmoil or sorrow, but at this point, as David pours his heart out to God, he's acknowledging how much he longs for God. I want you to listen to what David says. It's the first eight verses that I want us to look at this evening, beginning in verse one. Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly, I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I've looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. In your name, I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with fat and rich food, and my mouth with pray or will praise with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night, for you have been my help and in the shadow of your wings, I will sing for joy. Then verse eight, my soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. This is David as he is pouring his heart out to God and, and not in the sense that he is pleading with God for help, but this is a recognition of who God is and what God has done for him. And so when we take a look at this, we begin to really see the heart of David longing for God. And the question that I have for us is, do we long for God? Listen again to what he says in verse one. Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly, I seek you. Now, there are so many things in our life that we would look at and we would say, well, you know, those really aren't uh, things that, that would detract from me worshiping God or, or things that would draw me away from God. But in reality, if we really stop and think honestly about our lives, there are so many things that, that we, in a sense, worship as God. But David says, oh God, you are my God earnestly I seek you. And then, then listen to what he says at the end of that verse. It's verse one again. My flesh faints, he says, for you. My soul thirsts for you. Here I am. This is who I am in my very core, my very being. I long for you. I thirst for you. Earnestly I seek you. You are my God. That's what he's saying. But then notice this. He says, my flesh faints for you. And then he says, as in a dry and weary land, where there is no water. I'm not sure about you, but I know for me, I've been in places where there's no water. 
Uh, and for me, it's out west here in the United States. You go out to New Mexico, the western part of Texas, and go into New Mexico and out in the desert area and, and, and even in Arizona. And you get out into the desert as you're driving through. Maybe it's on I-40. You're driving through and you look around and there doesn't seem to be any water in sight. And in reality, you, you see, as you, at least for me, as I drive through on I-40 out into New Mexico and in, into Arizona, if you'll look around, you'll see dry riverbeds. And, and indeed, that area of our nation, of our country, is a dry and weary land. It's a land that really there's no water unless you want to drill a well down rather deep, you'll get water from underneath the ground. But at the surface, as you're going through, it's a dry and weary land. And I can't imagine traveling uh, back, back in the Western times as we think of them. I can't imagine traveling on horseback through that country and getting to a point where your canteen is empty of water. And you imagine how you would long and thirst for water in that dry and weary land where water may be miles away for you and you're on horseback. Imagine David telling God, God, you're my God. Earnestly, I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints as, as if it were in a dry and weary land where there's no water. This is David telling God, God, I long for you. But he doesn't stop there. Keep going again. He says, so I've looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. I've seen you, God. I know how powerful you are. I know your glory. And then he says this in verse three, because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. This is David acknowledging his understanding of God, his longing for God, how he earnestly seeks God. And, and, and not only that, but he, he thirsts for God as though he were walking through a dry and weary land where there's no water. But he doesn't stop there. He says, God, I've seen you. I, I know you. I know your power. I know your glory. I've seen you in your sanctuary. And God... Because you, because you are better than life, I'm going to praise you. I'll praise you as long as I live. And the reality is God's steadfast love, his faithfulness, they're better than life. And we ought to praise God because of who he is. And thinking about what David says here, and again, the reality is David pouring his heart out to God. The questions for us keep coming up. Do we long for God in this way? Do we earnestly seek him? Do we thirst for him as though we're walking through a dry and weary land where there's no water? We've seen God at work in our lives. We think back and see all of the ways that God has has blessed us, all of the ways that God has carried us through those challenges that we face in life. And we've seen his power. We see his glory. We see it revealed through his son, Jesus. But can we say with David that we long for him, that we earnestly seek him, that we thirst for him, that we know his power and his glory? And can we say to God, God, because of your steadfast love, the love and the, the mercy and the grace that you have for us, because that is better than life, I'm going to praise you. Do we do that? What are the things that you long for? Do you long for God in this way? Do you acknowledge his power, his glory each and every day? Do you thirst for him? Do you tell God, God, because because your steadfast love, because your grace, because your mercy, because the salvation that you provide through Jesus, because that is better than life itself, I'm going to praise you. Do you really believe that God's steadfast love and his grace and his mercy are actually better than life? This psalm is a challenging psalm to us. Oftentimes we just read, read over it and we think, wow, that's, that's really great. But the reality is, 
when we read through this, we can't help but question ourselves. Do I feel this way about God? I know God is faithful to me. I know God loves me. But do I feel this way about God? It's a challenge to all of us. And we need to ask ourselves, do we see God as God of our lives? Or are we putting other things in front of him? Do we long for other things that, that may take the place of God in our lives? Do we thirst for him? Do we earnestly seek him? Do we praise him because we have seen his steadfast love, his faithfulness, because we have seen his power and his glory? The challenge is there for us to examine ourselves and ask that question, is this the way I feel about God? Do I long for God?